Hey everyone, Arnaldo Offerman of Master School Dances and I'm going to talk to you about my new software that I use to control my lighting rig, Elation CompuShow. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Minicon yet, I'm just going to give you a kind of walkthrough of what makes this software unique, what I really like about it. A um, couple disclaimers though, I am running this on my Mac uh, using Parallels because this is a Windows only software, so things may look a little bit different than you know on your screen again just because it's rendered slightly different, but let's check it out, shall we? Now my personal rig, as you'll see later on uh, in another video, is a like, you know multiple screen rig. But whenever I'm designing software, I tend to just you know do it right on my Mac where it's quick and easy. Um, now one of the things that's really interesting about CompuShow is that it's patch-based software. What this means is when you're actually programming lights, you know, on most software consoles, it's just like if you're on an actual board, you know, you have your sliders and even if you don't have a fixture profile loaded, you know, if let's say you have your, you know, a, a parkan on channel 1, even if you know, never loaded that parkan's channel up, uh, or the profile, you know, into their software. If you move that channel up as long as the address right, it would still work. And this is different. This you have to have the fixtures profile. Let me explain to you why. First, let's go ahead and look into the actual fixtures. Now, fixtures are in a little tab called Pages, and of course, you can move tabs apart and do whatever you want. I'll show you that in a minute. But you'll notice here, for example, my QWH5. Okay, uh, you'll see here that it says that it's on DMX, you know, Universe One. Uh, channels 15 through 22. Okay, or like to make a try profile uh, channels, you know, 1 through 7. But let's go ahead and look at the QWH5. Okay, there's the tabs there. Actually, you know what? Let's do the yeah QWH5. Uh, these are scenes that I've already made. We'll go over switches over here and this in a moment. But here's some scenes that I've made of just colors. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly open up editor there. You'll notice that it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, now this is just the actual number of channels. There's no corresponding DMX channel. Um, if I go into my master tab, which basically is, you know, is all my lights, and again, I'll show you that in just a moment too. And let's, here's all my lights. If I click on all, Again, you'll notice for that flat part, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there are no DMX channels because the way that this works is this doesn't correspond with a DMX channel. Whenever I actually send a signal, for example, mega uh, part, you know, my mega bar, um, mega twenty four pro. It doesn't tell it, okay, well, this is going to be channel 22, 23, 24. This is actually saying, hey, send this command to channel 1 of the mega bar, send this command to, you know, the dress 2 of the mega bar, and so forth. Now, what does this mean? Because, you know, it sounds a little bit complex, but this is just stuff that works in the background, so you don't have to worry about the technicalities. What this means is that if I decide to, you know, maybe I, I might, you know, want to add more lights or I need to readdress things, not a big deal. I can just readdress, whoopsie, <laughs> I can readdress my QWH5 and not have to worry about all my show's getting messed up. Likewise, I could take somebody's shows that they made for the QWH5, import it into mine, even if their lights were on a completely different DMX channel. Because again, the shows don't call the uh, DMX channels themselves, they give commands to the light, and then the light, you know, translates it to the channels. So again, patch-based software is very exciting because you're not tied to the DMX channels. This little page translates everything out for you. Again, something really unique. Now, another great thing about it is that with a properly made profile, you can have shows running right away without any programming. For example, my Nova Scam. I just loaded the Nova Scam profile on here. I have not made any scenes whatsoever. Instead, I have switches. Now, to show you this a little bit better, I'm going to launch a 3D thing. So let's just go ahead and do that. They call it Easy View 3D. Okay, so we have loaded our 3D now. And again, I have not made any scenes whatsoever. I have switches. What are switches, you may ask? Well, they're basically pre-made automatic with the fixture profile whenever you load it in. And it's the individual control of DMX channels for the individual light. For example, the dimmer the gobo, the position, you know, and this basically just a fancy word for built-in patterns that 
uh, CompuShow makes for you, shutter and color. Okay, and this is all based again on the fixture profile. So let's say, of course, I'm going to turn my dimmer on and my shutter. Oh, bam. Okay, cool. I already have my lights already turned on. I selected Gobo, and then I can select, whoa, that's really fast. So let's go ahead and uh, slow it down just a bit. Of course, with win uh, this is running on parallel, so uh, the trackpad kind of acts funny on it. But there you go. And again, you'll see some basic shows there. Okay, I can also quickly just select a show. Now, what this means is that, again, if you don't have any scenes pre-made and you just quickly want to slap on a light and try it at a show, you'll be able to do that without having to worry too much on DMX programming. Um, you'll notice, again, as I selected a color, it kind of changed the color or the tab here. Where's this color light red? If I go back here... Okay, again, it changes this tab automatically. This tab allows me to control the speed of each individual option. So, for example, this is a shutter chase. So I can control the speed of that, you know, kind of almost make it like a strobe there. I can select the phasing. Phasing is basically one following the other. So again, when I used to have other DMX software, you know, and I wanted to make a cool show like this, I'd have to make one, you know, for various colors. I'd have to make one for my reds, one for my blue, you know, and then maybe blue and red or anything like that. Now I don't have to do that. Now I just basically, you know, I can use switches right then and there. And sure, you know, tons of software allows you to layer stuff on top, but the switches make things, makes things a lot easier. Because let's say that I have where, you know, these are changing colors. And you know what, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's just go ahead and uh, initialize it. Initialize basically means it's going to delete everything out. And um, I'm going to make a Layers tab. Now, i got to just go to Layers, and I'm going to Settings. Layers allow me to basically, ha you know, I can completely change this out from something else. Let's say, you know, if I have my uh, scenes for Novas for school dances and then have scenes for weddings, I don't have to have them all in one box. I can have them completely different. You'll see that again in just a moment, how this all works. But let's just work on this current layer. I'm going to make a new tab. So I'm going to click on this little star. It's called a zone. We're going to call it scenes. Or we'll just call it colors. Why not? Okay. All right, so we have that. And um, I'm just going to go ahead for craps and giggles and just turn it on. Now... Again, position, you'll see the position circle tab here. I can change it so I can quickly have one followed directly against the other. Or in general, if you want the page tab here, changes the speed for everything. Uh, everything meaning the color change, you know, the dimmer for it and all that. So, but again, let's go back here because I'm jumping all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new scene by clicking here. And I'm going to put it on the tab, the layer that's called colors. We're going to call it red, yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to have it, I want it to start off empty completely. Okay, and edit it. All right, so you'll notice that these are all red. Red basically means disabled, meaning that one channel won't override the channel. I want it to basically just do a step and that's it. And I'm going to choose red. Okay. Now my whole time, that's fine, one second, whichever. I'm not really worried about my whole time. Then I'm going to do another one. Right click and choose yellow. Save it. Mm, done. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just right click here for a second and choose settings. I want it to be, uh, I want a color icon. Now you can upload your own color icon if you would like. Or you can use one of the ones that's built in. Well, here's one for red and yellow. There's some additional options there. And again, that's something you might want to refer to the manual to. But again, if you remember, I can control by clicking here. And there's a page that says position circle. I can control the speed. So why not? Let's say I want it to go very slowly. And again, it's not usually this fickle. It's because I'm on a Windows emulator. And... The, I haven't set the sensitivity of the trackpad, which is probably a bad idea. Now I'm going to click on red and yellow. I want to change the speed of switching red to yellow. And again, I can also change you know, the phasing so I can have one turn red, yellow, then the next one turn yellow and all that. But I can also go to the page, and page in general changes the whole thing. 
So it changes the speed again of the red and yellow and how fast it moves, of course, relatively to each other. I can also dim it and so forth. I can go here to the Chutter Chase BPM and each one does different things. Okay, you'll see there again and I can phase it a little bit. You know, I can speed it up all the way. So maybe I want to do something like that, right? And then when I choose my position here, then slow it down. So it goes like a very slow, dramatic effect. Bam, you know, instant show right there. Um, this is obviously, if you do it this way, if you use switches versus, you know, pre-made scenes, which, you know, again, I do it like this because I have a lighting tech. Um, it's, I've also done it like a Four Weddings 2 with a MIDI con where I just quickly choose my parameters on the show based as I go. Um, it's just easier for me. If you want to make your own complete scenes, then you can just use switches to override it as well. However you'd like to choose. It makes things incredibly easy.